Greetings, everyone, from Father Mike Irwin at St. Catherine Drexel and the Tri Parishes on this Holy Thursday. Uh, an opportunity for us to be able to, to reflect on what the Mass means to us and more than that. I mean, what does it mean that Jesus Christ truly had passion for us and, and passion for doing the will of his Father? And so let us open up our hearts to pray. Loving God, we thank you for this Holy Thursday, a day that we will not be receiving Eucharist, but a day that we will long to receive Eucharist. And so in that longing, in that hunger, we find your presence. Help us to reflect on the passion of your son Jesus, that we will have even more respect for him and to find him close to us, even on, on this particular day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this is the gospel reading from the gospel according to John chapter 13. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was going to God, he rose from supper took off his outer garment, he took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Jesus, Simon Peter said to Jesus, Master, that not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garment back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize that I have do what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This act of humility with strength is conveyed to us in all four of the Gospels. It's not just here in, in John. In Matthew, it talks about blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And Luke talks about bringing down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. Uh, so it's in all of our Gospels that we hear this aspect of Jesus Christ as one who is humble. But especially it's striking here in the Gospel of John, because throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus is so strong and always in control. And yet here he is. In the very moment to show strength, he shows service. And so we're taken back, we're startled by this thing. And so we look at this gospel reading and we reflect on this kind of generosity and this kind of sense of togetherness. That uh, it's not supposed to be one person over everyone else, but rather it's supposed to be a mutual service. Yes, he is son of David. Yes, he was born in Bethlehem. And so he's from that kingly family, the kingly line. And so everybody would have this expectation of him as king. And everyone keeps thinking that's what leadership is. The stronger, the better. That's what leadership is. That's what they're dealing with in their time period with the Roman leadership at the time who were moving completely into the world of empire. And so it was all about power. The more power, the better. 
And here Jesus is setting a different kind of stage. It's fine to be powerful so long as you use it for service. But the only way it works is that we all serve one another. So this is not just Jesus serving. It's not like the leader only serves, but rather all of us humble each other to take care of each other along the journey. I've really been feeling this pretty strongly lately. I've had so many people call me to check out how I'm doing during this whole thing. And of course, it is kind of hard times, challenging times. All of us have a major change of pace to go through, and that's just as true for us priests as anyone else. And and of course, the great disillusionment for all of us that even though the church is right there, we can't use it. Um, and so that's disappointing as well. Um, but I could feel people's prayers, and I learned to soak them in to accept those prayers, accept that support, because then maybe I'll have more energy to support the next person. They're talking quite a bit during this COVID-19 of how on edge people are, how their nerves are rather rattled by the whole thing. And so even more of a time to be of service to each other. And the ultimate service is to just be a little bit patient with each other that everybody's feeling kind of edgy and everyone needs to help calm down and we can be that presence for each other to help each other to calm down. And that's the thing we need these days. And what a great image here of the washing of feet. A bath always calms us down. You know, sometimes you have to do that with a child that is super wound up is to be able to say, why don't you just take a shower or something? Why don't you just, you know, go float in a pool for a while? Somehow water is meant to calm us back down again. And here Jesus is doing so. Right before the big panic of his arrest, he's washing their feet. Hopefully we can be that same gift to each other. That all of us, even though we're kind of intense times, can be a calming effect. To not make matters worse. To not get each other so wound up that we can't think clearly anymore. But to stay calm and to be present to each other. And in that peaceful presence, as best we can offer each other, we are able to give people hope. I know our faith formation group is working with some other faith formation and other churches around town to try decorating some Easter eggs, making that a little project for the kids to have almost like a giant Easter egg decorating thing so as to put those eggs up in the windows as kind of a sign of solidarity that we are still rejoicing and celebrating the resurrection. So think about doing that. That can bring a lot of peace and joy to folks to have that kind of window decorating event go on. And as we do so, we can be bound together and unite together as church in such a joyful and happy and in peace-provoking way. And so let us pray. Loving God, teach us on this night when we miss our Eucharist so much to count on the fact that you're sending out your Holy Spirit to compensate for that, because you will be really present with your church, and you cannot be stopped. Help us to accept your support and your calm so that we can provide it as a gift to others in the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, this is Father Mike with the parishes here. Uh, Do look forward to... This weekend, we're going to be streaming another Mass at 8 o'clock a.m. on Easter Sunday morning. So hopefully you can tune in and watch that as well. And to see all the great things that are being offered through our archdiocese and through through the Vatican, to be able to participate in liturgy across the airwaves. And make sure you follow through on those fun things you can do as a family, whether it's washing feet with each other, or making a shrine to the cross as a family, or to maybe have candles lit to remember everyone's baptism on on Holy Saturday night, um, or simply getting dressed up and having decorated Easter eggs, we can continue to celebrate this Triduum and this Easter celebration. May God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.